Across the pond, it's a glorious time for boxing. For the last couple of years, the UK's had a dozen or so world titleists, and Carl Frampton might be the best among all the champions. Frampton was a near-unanimous choice for 2016's Fighter of the Year because he beat Scott Quigg in a super bantamweight unification bout and then moved up and outpointed Leo Santa Cruz in a fantastic title fight at featherweight. Frampton is 23-0, ranked in the pound-for-pound -pound top 10, and headed for a rematch with Santa Cruz. Carl Frampton had his first fight at age 7. A native of Belfast, Northern Ireland, he was a very good amateur. But as a young professional, he was virtually unknown in the USA. His only claim to fame was by association. From the start, he was managed by the immensely popular former world featherweight champion Barry McGuigan. As a young and unbeaten prospect, Frampton's toughest test came in June 2011 when he faced a legitimate tough guy in the Welsh 122-pounder Robbie Turley. At the time, Frampton was 24 years old and 9-0 as a pro. Credit Turley for proving amazingly resilient. But what was vividly on display was a special boxing talent. Going 10 rounds for the first time, Frampton showed almost everything a fighter might need. An outstanding jab, a technically perfect straight right, exceptional hand speed, purposeful movement, and spot-on timing. Robbie Turley made Frampton fight hard, and afterward, it was hard to doubt the Northern Irishman's championship potential. Five fights later, in September 2012, Frampton sought to increase his profile by tackling a former world champion in Canadian Southpaw Steve Molitor. Five years before, Molitor had been flaunting the same skills that fans were now witnessing from Frampton. The point of the fight was simple. It was Frampton's chance to prove he was ready for a shot at a world title. He did just that. Flooring Molitor three times, Frampton punched freely, yet intelligent. It was all too much for Molitor, who was stopped in the sixth round. Welcome to the big league. What a performance. He never fought again, and Frampton was ready to fight for a title. If Frampton Molitor followed a time-tested storyline, that of a champ to be overwhelming a faded but still useful former world champ, his next step was quite different. In Spanish strongman Kiko Martinez, Frampton was facing a future world champion. Frampton and Martinez clashed in Belfast in February 2013. As expected, Martinez applied non-stop pressure, but Frampton never wilted. Instead, he punched back sharply, busting up Martinez's face and keeping control of the tempo. In the ninth, with Frampton comfortably ahead on points, he fired a short right and a hook, and Martinez went down. Oh, oh, got, got, him. got him! He rose, but was in no shape to continue. It was the first time Martinez had ever been stopped. And he's gone! What a finish from Carl Frampton! He's answered all the questions! The fight made Frampton European champion. 19 months later, he again defeated Martinez, this time on points, and this time for the IBF world title. Carl Frampton, 27 years old, was a world champion. On February 28, 2015, Frampton made his first defense against American challenger Chris Avalos at home in Belfast. Well, the decibel level here in the Odyssey has been raised once again. With the crowd behind him, Frampton dominated Avalos with constant pressure. He's almost out on his feet. Big right by the way. He's a right cross, and he's packed up as he's And in the fifth round, he proved to be too much for the American. The fight is being pushed out of him. He looks ready to go. Show him a kid now as he rolls Frampton in. Frampton obliges him. And Stout stops the challenger in round number five. The only person happier than Frampton was his manager. Now it was time to fight in America. In July 2015, Frampton risked his 122-pound belt against Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. in El Paso, Texas. 
The fight was televised on CBS. Texas is a long way from Northern Ireland, and at least at the start, Frampton was a long way from his best. Inside the first 40 seconds of the first round, a jab shockingly produced a knockdown. And just before the belt, a chopping right down Frampton again. After the shaky start, Frampton then showed his true caliber. He outjabbed the taller Gonzalez, weakened him with hooks to the body, and masterfully won every round from the second through the 12th. That Frampton overcame such adversity spoke volumes of his heart. That he ended up retaining his title by wide margins on all three cards spoke volumes of his skill. Frampton! Before returning to America, Frampton had some unfinished business at home. The WBA Super Bantamweight champion was an undefeated Englishman named Scott Quigg, and not surprisingly, a hot rivalry had surfaced. In the sixth unification fight in division history, champions Frampton and Quigg collided in February 2016 in Manchester, England. It was an odd fight because Quigg did almost nothing for the first six rounds, and that limited Frampton as well. When is this fight gonna catch fire? What we didn't learn until after the fight was that Quigg had suffered a broken jaw when hit by an uppercut in the fourth round. Quigg nonetheless rallied late, winning the eighth, ninth, and 11th, but he had given away too many rounds, and when the scores were added, Frampton was the winner by split decision. How one of the judges scored the fight for Quigg, I will never understand. That same night, across the pond in Los Angeles, Leo Santa Cruz dispatched Kiko Martinez in a firefight, and Santa Cruz and Frampton expressed interest in fighting each other at featherweight. Santa Cruz, I'm ready for him. Bring Frampton on. With Frampton now holding two belts, it seemed as good a moment as any for a change. Frampton had fought his entire professional career, 22 fights, at Super Bantamweight. Given his struggles to make 122 pounds, a jump in weight was both sensible and well-timed. The quick fight meant everything back home, but a challenge of unbeaten WBA featherweight champion Leo Santa Cruz would largely define Frampton's essence as a fighter. Frampton was 29, 22-0, and in his prime. Santa Cruz, 27 years old, 32-0-1, and, and in his prime, those who were anticipating a fight of the year were being totally reasonable, and I was among them. The fight exceeded expectations. Facing off in July 2016 at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, Frampton and Santa Cruz produced a classic. Oh, lead right uppercut by Carl Frampton. Now Santa Cruz comes back with a one-two. It was the first time Frampton was an underdog since the Irish Championships more than 10 years before, but he quickly showed that neither the size of Santa Cruz nor the class of the champion was too much to overcome. Most of us at ringside gave Frampton the first five rounds. Many of them were close, but he was the harder and sharper puncher. Santa Cruz accelerated over the second half, and there were plenty of sensational toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges. But on my card, at least, Frampton never relinquished his early lead. What a night to be ringside in Brooklyn! I scored 115-113 for Frampton, and the Irishman won by majority 12-round decision. And the new WBA featherweight champion of the world. He was now a two-division champion and ranked as one of the best fighters in the world. As we eagerly anticipate Frampton Santa Cruz too, what kind of battle can we expect? Well, rematches are all different. In some, familiarity breeds caution, with the fighters less likely to trade shots. In many others, the winner of the first fight wins again only more easily. I can't see either of those scenarios with this fight. I'm guessing Frampton and Santa Cruz give us another night to remember. After all, neither of these two has ever backed down from a fight.